Okay, I'm going to do a couple of um, videos looking at dimensions, how to add dimensions onto different uh, types of, of shapes um, to make sure that they're, they're clear and they're, they're following standards. And I'll show you some ways to make sure that we're, we're doing it in a really sort of efficient way. So a couple of golden rules to start with. First thing, we never show units on a dimension. Uh, on shape and other software that we use, it takes that away anyway. So we don't need to worry too much, but make sure that we are working on a sheet that has got the right dimension. So this one here says here, <coughs> dimensions are in millimeters. If you need to change it, then go and see my little video on changing the units. Uh, <coughs> so that's fine, easy. Uh, next one, a drawing should not be over dimensioned. So it's really important when we're putting dimensions onto the different views of our part that we only put each dimension on once. So for dimensioning the height on the elevation, we wouldn't put the height on the end elevation. It'd be unnecessary. It's gonna add clutter, potentially add confusion. Um, another way that you could uh, do that is if there was two features uh, up the height that added up to make the complete height. If you dimension both those, you don't need to have the total height. You don't need to have all three. So think about whether the dimension you're adding is adding anything to the drawing or whether that information has already been um, conveyed in your other annotations. Uh, number three, really important, keep it neat. If it's not clear and easy to read, then you're going to make mistakes. Uh, reading. If you're trying to get information from a drawing, if you're on site, if you're in a workshop, if it's not clear, then you're potentially going to end up um, making something wrong. So make it laid out nice and tidy, making sure that, that it's, um, yeah, it just looks easy. Number four, part of that keeping neat is to not let the extension lines cross. I'll show you what I mean in a moment with that. Um, but what you might need to do is to put dimensions on a different view rather than cluttering it all on the same view or think about um, maybe how you could dimension it in a different way and really important number five um, did I say keep it neat it really is important that you can look at a drawing and straight away sort of see the story of the drawing you can see the main dimensions you can see the little bits of detail um, you're not struggling to try and work out where have they put the width where have they put the, the diameter of the main bar or what have you so keep it neat so what we're going to do we've got a couple of parts we've got a flat plate which we'll look at just now um, so we've got some holes um, we've actually got a, a threaded hole this one here which is a little bit different um, some radius <coughs> uh, fillets there we've got a shaft so a cylindrical um, object element that's going to have some different different things we need to think about and I've also got a, a little swept part so you might need to put um, some center lines around these corners. How do we do that? So I'll probably look at those in different couple of different videos so it's not too long. And then you can skip to the, the bit you really need to know about. So we'll start with flat plate. So I've already put in a couple of um, views. I've got an elevation and an elevation. Um, it's all I really need. I don't need a plan. It wouldn't tell me anything I can't put into these, um, these two views. Now, four holes and a fifth hole here. You see this is a bit different. So you should recognize that as being a threaded hole. So we've got a, an incomplete thin circle um, just outside of our first hole, our first circle rather. That, that's telling us there's a thread. It's an internal thread. So the thread's kind of biting into the actual part. So you could get a bolt and you could screw that bolt into that into that hole and it would, it would bite on the thread. So that's a little bit different. Uh, four holes, if I look at them, I'm thinking they look like they're probably the same distance apart uh, in from the edge. So maybe I can deal with them um, uh, more easily than dimensioning every single one. I've got a radius here and I'll obviously got to have a, an overall width and an overall thickness. So first thing I'm gonna do is drop my center marks in. So this tool up here in on shape center mark tool, all our circles should have a center mark um, uh, on them. And you'll notice here that we've actually got if I hover over this radius here, that the center of the radius, the center of the fillet is actually in the center of that hole. So I'm just going to hit, hit that one there so I can see that. Now, um, I'm going to put a uh, center line right down the middle of this because that hole is in the center. So if I was to dimension the full width, so I did that there. Um, if I Put a center line down here that's going to tell me that that is 90 in from the from the edge i don't need to actually add that size on so if i'm going to put a center line down here you'll notice this line here is shorter than that line there because of the fillet so there's two ways of doing center lines in on shape often we'll use a two point which is where we're going to hit find the middle of this line here 
it's hitting to that that triangle and then I would go down here and I would hit to the middle of that one but it's not going to work because the middle is there sometimes it will let you like here it will let you do a, um, a perpendicular so it will snap to perpendicular so that's worked if I was doing a cone the other day it didn't work so I'm just going to delete that and show you the other way the other way we can do it is using this which is edge to edge and what that's doing is it's saying show me two edges and I'll put a line bang in the middle of them both so what I could do here I could click that edge and I could click that edge and it's going to drop me a center line in there now it, it ends up always being lengthwise it's not gone right to the bottom um, it's gone sort of halfway between there and there what can I do that if I press escape and come out I can I can select my center line and I can actually drag it so I can make it a bit longer if I want to so either of those two options um, can work um, just make sure that your center line is, is protruding out from the edge of your part Anywhere else you need a center line? Well, I'm going to put a center line here. Normally you would have a <coughs> center line that would come to the edge, edge of your, <coughs> excuse me, to the edge of your um, fillet so we can see the extent of that curve and we can see where the center is. I think that's probably us. Next we'll look at the um, this, this fillet. So fillet down here, I can just use the ordinary dimension tool, uh, it's a radius. Anything that is a circle is going to be a diameter. Anything that is an incomplete circle is going to end up as a radius. On shape will do that for you automatically without um, you having to think about it. So I've got a radius there. That's fine. If I come over here, what information do I need to put on this one? Now I could put the height here. I don't like putting dimensions in between views if I can avoid it. I, I don't know why, I just don't like it. I could put it over here. Now that, I'd have to click the top and the bottom. It's getting a little bit messy here with the, the radius. So I think the best place for me to put that height would actually be on this view over here. Um, there's no reason why not to. It's not going to be complicated and busy because there's very little on here. Um, anything else on this view? Well, I need to put the thickness as well, which is going to be 10. And I'm going to bring it up so it's in line with that other dimension. You see how it's snapped. If I just do that again, um, delete that. If I just do that again, you can see when I brought it up, it actually picked up, look, this line here. So I know I'm, I'm in line, so it looks nice and neat. So I've got my width, I've got my height, I've got my thickness, um, I've got the radius, I've got my center lines. Now, these holes here are all going to be the um, same size, and they are all going to be um, 20 mil in. So, if I was to dimension them individually, I could do that, but I'd have lots of lines and things kicking about, which would be not very clear. I'm going to do it a little bit differently. Um, now, when you're dimensioning a hole, you could just use the ordinary dimension tool. I can do that. That's telling me it is a eight radius, uh, sorry, a diameter of eight. Um, doesn't tell me anything about the how deep the hole is. Now, I could turn on the hidden view on this view here. I turn hidden view on, hidden lines, and I can see that those holes go right the way through. It's a little bit confusing here. So I'm actually gonna leave that off um, for now. Um, so in order to communicate how deep the hole is, I'd need to write that on here. Quick way of doing that, options next to the dimension tool. Normally we just use that, it's just a standard dimension um, tool that's gonna to pick up uh, most stuff. But if you click it, you've got other options. So if you wanted to make sure we were doing a diameter or a radius or we've got angles, there's other things we can do. Um, we'll have a look at the chamfer dimension in the next video. But what I'm going to scoot down to is the one here that says hole cool out. And what that's looking for is a hole. And it's going to do, um, it's found its hole, it's going to do a slightly different um, sort of display. First thing, it's going to make sure that the line is horizontal. And it's also going to turn with the depth. Now, through basically means that that is drilled all the way through the part if i'd only got in say five mil it would give me a little down arrow and then it would say five so i knew that it was going five deep so i can click that there and that is my um hole call out however i've got four all the same they're all eight they're all through and they're all the same position in from the edge so what i'm going to do so I'm going to double click on that and I'm going to put four space X space and that will tell me that there's four times eight diameter holes going through. Uh, one other thing then is this hole here. So again, 
if I try to dimension, I don't know what's going to happen actually. If I try and just put a dimension on here, what's it going to do? It's going to give me, it's just going to give me, um, so that's giving me the hole at the center. It's not telling me anything about the fact that it is threaded. Uh, so rather than doing that, what we will do is we will use the hole cool out. And if I click on it this time, it's going to give me a bit more information. So what's that saying? So that's telling me that we're going to have a 10.3 mil hole through. So that's our tapping hole. And once we've done that, we are then going to tap with an M12 uh, with a pitch of 1.75 mil, and we're going to thread that hole. So that drawing is now complete. One thing I would say uh, is that the gaps, there is a gap between the geometry and the leader line. It's a bit small. And the arrows are also very small. So when I zoom out to full size, I can barely see them. Can't see the gap really. I hardly see the arrows. So the last thing I'm going to do is actually go to this spanner. I'm going to change my drawing properties slightly. If I come over here to um, the dimensions tool, I'm going to make my arrowhead five. I'm going to make the gap two, geometry gap two, and the extension line three. And you can see already on here that it's looking much better. I'm also going to change my decimal separator to a period, a full stop, because I prefer that rather than it being a comma. And you'll notice that the arrow on this one here hasn't changed. So these are whole call out, so they're a bit different. So I need to go to annotations and change my arrowhead there as well. If I do that now, I've got a bigger arrowhead there. So. So for a flat part, what we looked at, we've looked at center lines, we've looked at some circles, we looked at how we could anna, uh, dimension multiple holes, and we've looked at hole callouts. How do you tell you the depth and how do you say that there is a thread? One thing that's missing before we leave that, I've just realized is the views. So we need to make sure we've got our elevation in block capitals. I think I've spelt wrong. I have. Uh, go back to that elevation, and the other view is going to be the um, close that uh, end elevation. I'm getting pop ups coming up on my computer. End elevation, there we got it again. Try and make them in line, try and get them centered on the, on the view, and that will do. For now. Okay, so if you look at the next video, we'll have a look at that, the shaft part um, here, and we'll look at how we can dimension that. So, just looking at this drawing we've just finished, um, on, um, reflecting on the centre marks. So, these centre marks on shape gives us a pretty feeble, they, they just give us a single cross. Um, normally, uh, in other software I've used, you hit a centre mark on a circle and it gives you um, the centre line sort of extended either side of that circle. So what I think we need to do here, because they're a little bit feeble, is to actually add a centre line. Uh, so if we click top and bottom of the circle, that'll give us, and on the sides, you can see it's locking to that midpoint. So I think we need to do something more like that to make that a proper looking drawing on each of our on our on each of our holes. So um, I don't know why they don't extend but uh, they, they don't seem to this one here I just need to put one across there because I've got a certain line vertically and this one here I can just drag these lines a bit further across to, to like that so there we go so that's what I think you should uh, just add adds uh, better clarity to that drawing